What's up guys and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. So this is going to be another BGS premium submission where we look over the cards that I'm sending in detail first, um, give a prediction of how I think they're going to grade, and then compare that to how they actually do when they come back from Beckett. Um, so we've got a total of six cards to go through. They're all pretty high end. Uh, I have other stuff that I want to send off, but until BGS opens up some lower service tiers, there's pretty much just no option for sending that stuff. Um, because premium costs $250 per card, and that is a lot. Alright, so first up we have a first edition glossy print Dart Magician from LOB. Um, so this is a pretty big hitter, uh, and the card's in really good shape as well. Uh, for the most part, it's actually pack fresh, but it just has this little bit of whitening at the top, which uh, it's very small, but at the same time, I think because of the placement, you can see it quite clearly, um, which is unfortunate, but that's how it goes. Uh, centering on the card is also not the best. It's to be honest, pretty good for a glossy print ultra, but it's definitely shifted to the right a little bit and then also down on the front. Um, on the back, it's shifted up like most of the glossy print ultras are. Aside from that, very clean, um, no edge or corner wear on the back. So I'm thinking most likely this card will end up with a nine, probably with nine fives on corners and surface, but nines on edges and centering. Um, but it could sneak a nine five depending on how that centering does. So this will definitely be one to watch. Uh, next up is a card that I'm really hoping grades well for in terms of for my collection. Uh, it's a wavy print, Swords of Revealing Light. And this card's actually also very much faded, but with cards like this where there's not really any magenta in the card to begin with, it's actually quite hard to realize it at first. Uh, the most obvious way to tell with a magic card like this is to look at the um, border around the text box, because on a normal magic card that'll be pretty much orange, kind of red. Whereas when the card is really faded and all of that magenta is gone, it actually looks almost yellow instead. Um, so yeah, pretty cool feature, even though it doesn't change how the card looks that much with Swords of Revealing Light. Um, but yeah, in terms of how I expect this card to grade, it all pretty much comes down to centering. Centering, you can see, is pretty shifted to the left, and it's also a little bit shifted up. Um, that goes for both sides, both front and back. So centering definitely could end up with an 8.5 on this card, uh, in which case there's no way it can get a gem. But if the centering gets a 9, the rest of the card is really, really clean. I think edges and coordinates could even get 10s. Um, surface should for sure be a 9.5. So I'm really hoping we can get that 9.5. Um, I will be conservative and say my prediction is a 9, but this one has a really good shot if it just gets slightly lucky on centering. And we have one more super rare from LOB to go through, which is a glossy print Flame Swordsman. I uh, love how this card looks, both in wavy and glossy print. I definitely say it's the best uh, super rare from any OG set. Uh, just really in terms of everything, like artwork, aesthetics, being iconic, being a Joey card. It's just got everything going for it. Uh, now this is a card I cracked from a PSA 9. I thought, to be honest, it was a pretty harsh 9. The centering is a little bit shifted down, but it's not bad. Um, left to right is fine as well. Uh, the back of the card is pretty much flawless. Front of the card is really clean as well. It has the tiniest bit of white at the bottom, but it's pretty much invisible, and I don't think it'll really affect the grade much. Uh, so I'm definitely hoping for a 9.5 on this. If we could get the 9.5 on centering, which is not out of the question, but I wouldn't expect it, then we could get something like a quad, quad plus 9.5. But even if it gets a 9 on centering, that should still end it up as a pretty comfortable 9.5 overall. And now getting into a bit of Metal Raiders, we've got a first edition Mirror Force. Uh, this is ever so slightly faded, so it looks different when you put it next to a, a completely saturated copy, but I wouldn't really describe it as faded when it has this color. Um, centering is great on this card, very good for a Mirror Force, which is, I would say, one of the less well-centered cards from MRD. Uh, edges and corners are really good on both sides as well. It does have some light scratching on the back, I'm not sure how well it picks it up through the card saver. But that will affect the grade, uh, and it also has like a little print line on the front as well. So I'm thinking probably either an 8.5 or a 9 on surface. Uh, the rest of the subgrades should be 9.5. So it would be nice to get a 9.5 on this, but I'm not really too bothered about it, and I'll be happy with a 9, which is my prediction. And one more card from MRD, which is a B-Skull Dragon. Pretty big card, uh, arguably the most expensive card from Metal Raiders. It kind of changes between this and Summon Skull for the most part. This card's really well centered as well, um, and again, edges and corners are very good. It came from the same lot as the Mirror Force, and it kind of has very similar issues, so pretty much clean, but then just a few light scratches on the back. Um, and again, these came from that collection, which I mentioned at the start of the video, where the cards were actually kept unsleeved for many years. So that's why, even though these cards have never been played with, they do have a light 
um, scratch here and there, which will affect the grade. Um, this one, I think, can get the 9 on surface. It's a little bit cleaner than the Mirror Force. So I'm hoping for a 9.5 overall, probably a basic 9.5 with uh, three 9.5s and then the 9 on surface. All right, and now we're down to the final card. Uh, now, in terms of value, I did say the Dark Magician was the biggest card in the sub. But in terms of how much I'm looking forward to subbing something, this will be the number one card. Uh, and that is a super faded 1.5 print LOB Blue Eyes White Dragon. Uh, so it's not wavy. You can see it doesn't have the, those vertical ripples on the card. But apart from that, 1.5 print has just as good eye appeal as wavy. And this card looks incredible. Um, it's in great shape as well. Really no edge or corner wear whatsoever. Um, surface is clean as a whistle. So if there's only one card in this sub that's going to gem, I'd expect this to be the one. If we got a nice grader, a pristine isn't even off the cards, but it would need the 9.5 on centering, which maybe is a bit generous. Um, I'd say it can get it, but it is a tiny bit shifted top to bottom. And we'd need 10s on everything else, which is pretty unlikely. So it's definitely not something I'm holding my breath for. But given how clean the card is, it would be really nice to at least see one or two 10 condition subgrades on there to reflect that. Um, so yeah, that brings us to the end of the preview, guys. Now that we've looked over all of my predictions, we're going to cut out from this part of the video um, and see how the cards did when they came back from Beckett. All right, so the cards have been graded by BGS. Um, there were definitely some more unexpected results this time compared to my recent submissions. Um, but either way, they are back now and we are ready to go through the grades. So starting off with the big hitter, the Dark Magician, uh, my expectation for this was a Quad++ plus plus 9, um, or at least some kind of 9 overall. And what we got was actually exactly what I predicted. So not even just the grade, but like the subgrades, that's all what I expected. Um, very close to gem mint, but both the centering and the edges do just let it down that little bit too much for it to get a 9.5. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with this, especially considering uh, the price that I paid for it, or, or like for the whole collection that it came with. Um, I cannot complain at all. So yeah, uh, this is for sale, by the way. If anyone's interested, then just hit me up on Instagram. Uh, then the next card, this is getting into some of the stuff which was more unexpected about the return. Uh, so next up is the B-Skull Dragon. Uh, and my prediction for this was a, uh, a BGS 9, probably with, uh, again, pretty strong subgrades, but surface maybe 8, 5, maybe 9. Um, so overall, I wasn't really expecting a gem. Uh, but the grade we got was actually a BGS 8.5. Uh, and most of the subgrades are fine. I think the 9 on centering is, is probably fair. It's a strong 9, but it, it is a little bit off top to bottom. 9.5's uh, edges and corners is fine. Surface 8, though, in my opinion, is extremely harsh. Um, the front is basically perfect on this. And even the back has only, like, very, very light scratching. It's kind of hard to show it through the case because, obviously, the case has scratches as well. But I would not say, like at least based on my past grading experience, that the surface on this card is bad enough for an 8. Um, so this was a bit disappointing for sure. Um, I was hoping it would get a bit higher than that, but I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, now, the next card we're going to go through, though, this is the Mirror Force, which, again, I was expecting a similar kind of grade, probably a BGS 9. Um, on this one, because it's even better centered, I thought it could get a 9.5 uh, if the surface was able to get a... Uh, a 9. My prediction was an overall 9 though, not a 9.5. <laughs> but the grade we got was uh, was a BGS 8. So this is the first time we have ever had a white label, uh, I think in any of the return videos I've ever done to be honest. Um, I've had a lot of 8.5s before, but to get a BGS 8, honestly the card has to be pretty bad and I just do not generally submit cards of that quality. Um, so you can see that they got three of the subgrades like fine, those were all 9.5s, but the surface got a 7 on this, which is honestly terrible. I mean, 7 can even have like a small crease or something, but you for sure expect a lot of scratching, like some dents, something like that. Um, and this card does not have anything like that at all. You can see uh, that that's a bit of um, junk inside the case, by the way, that's not on the card. It's a really nice card overall. Uh, it does have that little factory... Um, line coming across the, the image, which is not a scratch, it's just like actually part of how the card is printed. So I could see that affecting the grade a bit, but definitely not down to a 7. Um, and the back has some light scratching like the B-Skull Dragon. I think it was actually slightly worse even than the B-Skull Dragon, 
But to be honest, it's still not bad at all. I mean, you can see it just looks like a clean card. It does not look like a BGS 8. So I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Um, this one is definitely a disappointment. Um, with the B-Skull, I'll probably just keep it as it is because I didn't think it would get a gem anyways. And it's probably not worth paying another $250 just to upgrade it from an 8.5 to a 9. Uh, the Mirror Force, honestly, I think I'm going to have to crack it one way or another. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to regrade it, but even just selling it raw, honestly, probably has better value than a BGS-8 with a 7 on surface, because that is a really, really bad grade. Um, so yeah, you got to expect some lows sometimes when you're grading. That's definitely one of those. Uh, next up, we have the Swords of Revealing Light, uh, faded wavy print. I was really hoping for a 9.5 on this. That was, I mean, realistically, I didn't expect it because the centering is pretty off. But if I could have chosen one card to get a gem in this sub, this would have been it, just because I really needed a 9.5 for my complete uh, gem and wavy set. Uh, the grade we got was just a BGS 9. Uh, this one, unlike the MRD, I don't really have anything to complain about here. Um, it got gem mint condition subgrades, which it deserved, and then an 8.5 on centering, which it's like maybe a tiny bit on the harsh side, but realistically, it is off both ways, so it's fair enough. Um, so yeah, it's a bit disappointing for me just because I really need a gem of this card and it's so hard to grade, but overall, I can't really complain, and it did still get a 9, which is a decent grade. Uh, now we're getting into the last couple of cards that I sent. Uh, first up, we have the Flame Swordsman Glossy Print, which, uh, as I said earlier, I cracked this from PSA 9 because I really thought that it could get gem mint grade at BGS. Um, to be honest, I think it could even get like a gem mint grade at PSA, but I don't really like gambling like that. And with PSA, you just never know what they're going to do. If it gets a 9 again, it just feels really dissatisfying because you feel like you've wasted the, the money for regrading it. Um, so yeah, my prediction on this was a 9.5. I thought realistically it should get it one way or another. Um, and that's what we got. So uh, basic 9.5, 9 on centering because of that top to bottom shift, and 9.5 on everything else. Uh, I do actually think that the uh, the corners and the surface on this are kind of harsh. There was really nothing wrong with it uh, in those aspects, um, especially the corners, which are kind of like an easy thing to judge, you could say. They're really nice to shape. There's no whitening at all. I do think they should have been 10s, um, but we just got one of those graders this time who uh, unfortunately doesn't give any 10 subgrades, uh, no matter how clean the card is. I don't think actually there was a single 10 subgrade, um, either on my cards or there were even some other people who submitted cards in the same submission, which I haven't shown in this video, but I don't think any of them got 10 subgrades either. So it's always disappointing to see that from BGS because uh, you would like to see 10s given when they're genuinely deserved. but. Unfortunately, that is how it is sometimes. And getting on to the final card, this is the faded 1.5 print Blue Eyes White Dragon. Very, very cool card. I did send this off thinking it would get a 9.5 for sure. Um, possibly a quad 9.5 depending on the centering, and again, possibly with some 10 subgrades depending on you know what kind of grader you get. And we got a BGS 9.5 gem in. So, Yes, the subgrades could be a bit higher, but to be honest, I'm very happy with this one. Uh, as far as I know, it might be the only BGS 9.5 with this kind of color um, unlimited out there in existence. Very, very scarce to find these kind of cards um, when the fade is that extreme. And then, like, let alone finding them in pack fresh condition where they can grade gem mint. Uh, so this is an awesome way to finish the submission. Probably the highlight for me. Um, and this card, by the way, um, is being sold to a friend of mine. So uh, it is kind of for sale, but not publicly because it's already been reserved for, for a buddy of mine. Uh, the reason I'm not keeping it for myself is because I already have a first edition wavy print blue eyes with the same color. So I kind of felt like I should let another collector enjoy it rather than just kind of hoarding all the faded blue eyes for myself. But yeah, that brings us to the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, BGS return submission um, video. I hope it was informative for like the grading process and I guess also how grading can go wrong even when you pre-screen your cards pretty carefully. Sometimes you just do not get the grades that you wanted. Um, whether you're sending to PSA or BGS, there's really no difference there uh, in terms of whether it can happen or not. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a great day. And for now, this is Schlost signing out.